Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. So how you become a consummate word keeper is by making yourself crazy when you don't keep your word. That's the opposite of making an excuse. You will break your word. All of us will. The issue is what do you do then? Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. We all know that integrity is important, but what is it exactly? You may be surprised to discover that you don't have the integrity you tell yourself you do, and therein lies the opportunity. The most basic expression of integrity is keeping your word, and most people don't do it nearly as often as they think. The result? Broken agreements are bad business. They hurt you and those around you in ways you may not have appreciated until now. This episode is from a recent webcast that happens each week for Clear and Open members. For more information about the many benefits of Clear and Open membership and how to get the help you need in conversations like this, go to clearandopen.com. Now let's dive in. Now, if you ask 100 people what integrity is, you'll likely get 100 different answers. Integrity is such an interesting concept because everyone will agree it's really important, but nobody has any clue what it is. Well, not nobody, that's an exaggeration. Most people can't define it, but they'll tell you how important it is. And they'll tell you that they are a person of integrity and then not be able to define it, which I think is really funny. It's universally, oh yeah, I'm, it's integrity, very important. And if you challenge someone's integrity, well, them's fighting words, despite the fact that most of the time they can't actually define it. The best way to understand integrity is to come at the idea of wholeness. You know, we talk about like the integrity of the ship was um, impacted. There was a hole in the hull. It's no longer whole. There's a hole, so it's no longer whole. When the integrity of something is disturbed, its wholeness is somehow undone. That's the original meaning of integrity. When it comes to personal integrity, what we mean is a gap between the inner you and the outer you. That's the wholeness. It's a lack of coherence. So the most basic principle and the most basic way of the expression of integrity is to do what you say you're going to do keeping your word. Keeping your word is the most basic and simplest way of maintaining personal integrity. You do what you say you're going to do. Now, this is where that voice in you may start to show up. Some of you probably just heard a voice in your head that said, oh, well, I do that. I always do what I say I'm going to do. Raise your hand. How many of you heard that voice? Yeah, of course. Now, notice how quickly that happens. Did that voice happen quicker than the voice that said, hmm, I wonder where I don't keep my word? Which was your first reaction? If you're like most people, your first reaction is, oh, I always keep my word. And that statement of presumed fact beat the consciousness punch. It was first to the moment, then the question of, hmm, I wonder where I don't do that. Notice that. That's telling. And it's totally natural. And that's resistance. That's resistance. It's fine that it's there. But now this is a self-management moment. Set it aside and go, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, I know what you think. But I couldn't do it 100% of the time. Or I really want to discover where maybe there's some places where I don't. So I'm going to go into some more detail about what keeping your word means and what it doesn't mean. And keep trying this on. Like I said, look for where you don't embody it because that's how you get better at it. Learning to honoring your word in, this, in, in the very rigorous and intense way that I hold is necessary to be a great professional. The way you get there is by grabbing yourself by the scruff of the neck and sticking your face in your own shit. That's how you do that, where you go, oh crap, I broke my word. That makes me crazy. How did that happen? 
Well, it happens. The voice says, hey, you know, I'm really busy. No, no, wait, that's not good enough. It doesn't matter that I'm busy. I broke my word. That's not okay. That's how you do it. You start by being not okay with ever breaking your word. It has to be like a personal mission. It has to be like murder for you. Like you don't do it. Like you just killed someone in a drunk driving accident and you were drunk. It has to feel like that. It has to matter that much. The reason it has to matter that much is because we live in a society that doesn't give a shit about it. We live in a world where people say, oh yeah, I always keep my word. And then 20 minutes goes by and they don't. And then you call them on it and they make excuses. That's the world we live in. That's the vast majority of people. And we're all conditioned by that. We're all conditioned to have this knee-jerk response, just like you all noticed. Oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. Yeah, of course you do, except when you don't. And those are the places to improve. So how you become a consummate word keeper is by making yourself crazy when you don't keep your word. That's the opposite of making an excuse. So anytime anybody, for example, reminds you to do something, and it's, this happens every day. Hey, did you uh, see that email that I sent you a couple days ago? Oh, crap, right, I forgot about that. You just broke your word, in essence. We'll talk more about communication later on. Anytime you drop a ball and have to be reminded of something, implicitly you broke your word. So on one level, look, it's fine, mistakes happen. But those are the moments to get really curious about how you did that. How did you do that? You dropped the ball. How did you do that? Most common answer I hear, oh, I tried to keep it in my head. Terrific. Now you know how you did that. I drop balls by trusting my mind to hold information and commitments. You all know from Clear Workspace Open Mind how limited that is. One of the points of the course, Clear Workspace Open Mind, is to give people the tools to be able to keep their word. Because the biggest excuse in the world for word breaking is, I got busy. That's the biggest and most popular excuse in the world. So clear workspace, open mind in one way, the whole thing is just about taking away that excuse. So when you do drop a ball, you do miss an email, you do miss an appointment or whatever, you have the tools to be able to go, okay, how exactly did that happen? Oh, well, I've got 9,000 emails in my inbox and it got lost in there. Or, oh, I was checking my email too much and I forgot to write down blah, blah, blah. I was overwhelmed or whatever. All of those reasons, that's what you do. But it starts in one way and there's sort of a chicken and the egg thing here where you could argue, well, you got to get organized before you can make the commitment to keeping your word. Or, But another way of looking at it is you start with, I always do what I say I will. Every time, no exceptions. And if I fail... I fix the way it happened. I fix the reason it happened. I've been working on this for over a decade. I still break my word sometimes. About one or two times a month, maybe. And when I do, I take it so seriously, I may spend an hour troubleshooting how that happened. Okay, what happened? How did I do that? What exactly happened? That's responsibility. Excuses are, hey, you know, I got busy and forgot. Hey, it happens. That's the world we live in. So a lot of times when I talk like this, I get criticized as being rigid. Well, that's so rigid, you know, mistakes happen and people get busy. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. That's true too. Which world do you want to live in? When when I speak about saying, no, keeping your word 100% of the time, that's the goal. This flies in the face of all of our conditioning. People say, well, it can't be done. Well, it's so rigid. Well, it doesn't allow for blah, blah, blah. All those are excuses. Now, on this subject, though, sometimes things will come up and get in the way because you can't predict the future. Life happens, sure. But then what do you do about that? How many times have you had this situation happen to you? Somebody gives their word to you about something And let's say they're going to get something to you by five o'clock on Wednesday. And it's 4.59 on Wednesday or it's Thursday morning and you go, hey, where's that thing? Oh yeah, something came up. 
Can, can it wait till Monday? Well, when was the time to tell you about that? When was the time to tell you about that? If, they, if someone makes a commitment to someone to keep their word about something and it has a deadline, I'm offering that the moment they needed to tell you about it was the exact moment they knew the deadline couldn't be met. That like the next thing, as soon as they go, oh, this just came up, I'm going to have to push this back. The next thought is, who do I need to tell about that? Who were relying on that deadline? That's the next thought. But how many times in your life does this not happen? Where you find out about the deadline not being made after the deadline. This is a total lack of integrity. But it's completely normal. It's completely normal. So I can't say which is right or wrong. It's not about that. It's about which is good business. Which do you like? What kind of life do you want to live? And what kind of world do you want to contribute to? Because you can make the world a more agreement honoring place just by embodying this, just by being that part of the solution. Oh, the last piece about integrity and word keeping, being on time is an expression of word keeping. It's an expression of integrity. And this is another really common one. Oh, sorry, I'm late. I got caught in traffic. Sorry, I'm late. Something came up. Sorry, I'm late. Or people arriving in time rather than on time. Many of you arrived to this webcast late or in time, which being you know quarter past. That's in time. On time would have been two or three minutes before. That's on time. In time is you just made it. And that's a form of not keeping your word. Now, I don't necessarily have a judgment about that. It's up to you and how you want to live your life. But what I'm offering here is, first of all, being in time. One of my main motives for not being in time, you know, just in time with this hurried thing. Do you like the experience of being in time? Do you like the experience of just making it? Do you like the experience of walking into the meeting and most of the people are already there and you're sitting down and kind of scrambling yourself to get focused? And do you enjoy that? Is that the kind of life you want to live? It's up to you. But being just in time or chronically a little bit late is a classic expression of overwhelm. And one of the reasons people do it is to get this kind of energy out of it. You see what I mean? It's like the, the lateness, can, you can sort of feel it. Like when you're a little bit late for something, it gives you a little bit of an adrenaline high. You know, when you're scrambling in your car and you have gotta get going and you know, you're passing people on the road to get there on time. There's a, it's, in one way, it's not comfortable, but in another way, it's a little bit of a high. There's an adrenaline rush to it. So this is what I'm saying here. A lot of times people will unconsciously not keep their agreements whether it's about being on time or anything else, in order to create conflict in small amounts that makes you feel alive. Because when you're running behind on stuff, you, you've all had days like this where you're constantly behind all day. In one way, it doesn't feel good. But in another way, sure makes the time pass fast, doesn't it? It's kind of exciting. It actually serves that way. And that's a key feature of the first two stages, uh, crisis and survival mode. It's high energy, high energy output, high energy experience. It's not pleasant in one way, but it is exciting. So in, when it comes to cultural differences, I would say, you give the person the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, well, this person comes from, you know, wherever, where people are, are, tend to be later. Okay, but they're in your culture now. So you have a meeting with them and say, hey, I understand that you, know, you have a habit around time and maybe it comes from your culture, but let me tell you what the business culture is here because this is the way we're going to do things. And on time means you're five minutes early. And I know that may take a little time for you to work that out. Let's say 30 days from now, by that time, you're always five minutes early and I'm here to help you. So you consider it. And you take it into account from, from a management perspective, but you don't caretake it and co-sign it. It's fine that it is that way now, and you've got 30 days for it to be different. It's not about the content. It's about the context. You will break your word 
All of us will. The issue is, what do you do then? What do you do then? What's your reaction to it? How not okay is it for you? Uh, Someone just said every doctor should watch this about chronic overbooking. And what about chronic overbooking on airplanes, right? This is one of the most widely accepted, totally irresponsible things to do. The flight is overbooked, right? Somebody was like, can you just imagine the the lack of integrity? Somebody, some guy with a slide rule and and a calculator was like, one day, this happened, right? One day, someone was like, hey, I... You know, I'm just looking at all these planes taking off with empty seats. You know, that's money we're losing. How do we make it so that the plane is always full? Well, we've done X and Y and Z. Yeah, we tried to, but the planes are still not full. What if we sold more seats than actually were on the plane? And someone certainly said, well, how are you going to do that? Well, statistically speaking, you know, 1% of the seats don't show up. You know, they miss connections or whatever. So let's just oversell the planes. And then somebody would say, well, what happens when, you know, it's overbooked and, and people do show up? Well, we'll figure something out. <laughs> we'll just delay the plane and start auctioning off vouchers, right? Well, everybody like, huddle. you've been in them, those moments where you're hanging out on a gate and then the plane is like, it's already 20 minutes late. And they're like, okay, and we still need three more seats. We've got a $500 voucher if you're willing to wait for the next flight to Orlando or whatever. It's embarrassing. It's icky. It's bad business. You can feel it like, oh, we're waiting around for someone to trade time for dollars now. It's not good business. You can feel it. It's just totally money driven. There's no integrity in that. It's all about them. What's, the customer experience is made worse by it. You see what I mean? This is a lack of integrity. This is what I mean. The agreement, let's go back to business and the agreement. Right? The agreement is I bought a ticket. I've got a seat now. That's what the ticket says. There's even, you know, it says 11F on it. There's the seat. Now you're telling me I don't necessarily have it? This is a broken agreement. You see? But in the world we live in, it's like, oh yeah, it's the same with rental cars. You ever show up, you have a rental car reservation and you show up and they don't have a car? I have a reservation. I thought that's what it meant. Yeah, well, you know, things happen. You're supposed to have the car. And th- this is what happens. This is how rampant the, the lack of integrity is in our world. And if, you, and if you were to say to the rental car agent or the gate agent, you say, this is out of integrity, watch how offended they get. How dare you say, you broke your word. I have a ticket here. It says I get to go on this flight. And I want 11F. That's what I bought. And they'll look at you like you're crazy. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening and bye for now.